pastor asked me um, or said that we were going to share the first Sunday of Advent on hope and that I could just share verses and what does hope mean to me. My mind was kind of like 50 different directions. I'm like, hope is everything to me. Jesus is my hope. So I just want to focus on a few verses um, that God led me to to share what hope means to me. When I think about hope, I first think I'm not alone and that everything I go through, he is right there with me and it's whatever struggle I have is not going to last forever. So this morning I was actually thinking about obviously Advent and Christmas. So one of the first scriptures um, that I actually hadn't had planned until this morning um, that God reminded me of is in Isaiah, very familiar for this time of year. Um, Isaiah chapter 9. Starting at verse 6, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make it happen. So from the beginning, God had planned for us to have hope through Jesus. Now, the verse that God first brought me to when I was thinking about hope and looking for that um, was in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6 and verses 18 through 20 says, So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone there for us. He has become our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. For me, that is like the entire gospel, like hope right there in the presence of God. We have no access to God's presence without Jesus. And because we can go into his throne, into the presence of God, we have hope. And his presence is all hope. And that, as this says, is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. This world is crazy, full of pain, full of struggle. And if we need anything, that's an anchor for our souls to stay right here on this firm foundation of Jesus Christ is where I'm going to stay So that even though in my world storms are coming, I'm going to stand strong. I'm not going to be moved because I am standing on Christ. And the last verse that I want to share is in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. So we think of Advent and Christmas. We are preparing for Christ's second coming. And that is hope right there. Like, I can think, wow, I have hope that I will be with him for eternity. And I don't know what else, what else is better about hope than that. Amen. Amen. I just want to share one more verse with you, and this is really for all of us. It says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we are thankful for hope today, and let's just, let's just stand together, and we're going to pray as we've lit the candle of hope, <clears throat> as we think about the hope that we have in through Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful today for hope. Not, not just a hope, Lord God, that is worth nothing, Lord, just a, it's a hope that has a foundation, it's a hope that has a name, and that name is Jesus. And so, Lord, right now, Father God, as we begin to worship, as we begin to lift up the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that we would would constantly be reminded of that hope that we have in you. And as we are reminded of that, as we remember that, Lord, we will worship accordingly. We will thank you, we will worship you, we will praise you, we will honor you because of the hope that you have bestowed upon us. God, we are so very grateful that we don't have to die 
and go to hell. But we get to live forever because of Jesus Christ. So Lord, help us never to take your hope for granted, but help us, Lord, to stand on that hope, the anchor for our souls. In Jesus' name, amen.
spoken word you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. deserve it still you give yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God yeah
Praise God. Yes, give God praise. Give God praise. I want you to tell me, why is God good to you? Why is God good to you? Come on, tell me. His forgiveness, His healing, His mercy, His love, His faithfulness. His perfect plans, forgiveness, His purpose for you. Come on, I know God's good to more people than that. His patience. Patience, hallelujah. Hope, deliverance. His what? His unending love. He never forsakes us. Amen. Always here. He created us. Praise God. Church, we serve a good God. We serve a good God. Oh, man, He's so amazing. If it's possible, I think I fell in love with Him a little bit more yesterday. He's just so amazing to me. He's so good. Every time I talk about him, every time I share him with someone else, he just becomes that much better. Can we just take a moment right now? We've heard a word from the Lord already this morning. But I just want to take a moment. I, I, Man, I just believe that God has a messages for this church that He wants to speak into the depths of our hearts. And so right now, as we just take time, just now what you're gonna have to do, you have to focus on Jesus. You got you gotta get everything else out of your mind. Just focus in on Jesus. Begin seeking his heart. And then as we're sitting here in silence, God's gonna give you a word, He's gonna give you a sentence. And I just want you to share it because this is God wants to speak through you. He may give you a vision. Whatever it is, don't hold back. Don't be timid or afraid. Just let God use you today. So we're going to just take a moment. We're just going to get quiet before the Lord. We're going to seek his heart. And we're going to see what he wants to say. Let my love show through you. God made you more than to be nothing. Mm, powerful. Mm. Thank you, Lord.
was that? Last name Trump. Yeah, that one. Mm. Father, we give you praise right now. Right now, Lord. God, you have chosen to use these vessels, Father God, for your glory. God, you have chosen to use them, Lord, to speak specific things into this body. God, we give you praise right now, God, that you love this body. You love these people, Lord, that you want to speak specific things to us. God, I pray, Lord, that our hearts will be open to hear, to receive these words, Lord God, that you have given to us. I give you praise for them, Lord. Church, you heard many of these words. Never stop praying. He didn't create, create you to become nothing. Share his joy. James 1.17, every good and every perfect gift. See, when God speaks, every word may not have been just for you, but I believe that Every word is for this body. And maybe one specific word spoke into your spirit. I'm just grateful that God chose to speak to us today. It's amazing what can happen if we'll just get quiet before the Lord. It's amazing what he will say to us. As we enter into this time of prayer this morning, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. Just as God used you to speak a word, I believe now God wants to use you to pray over people. So we're not gonna be up here at the front, but I'm gonna ask you to get out of your comfort zone I'm going to ask you to, if, somebody, if God has laid someone on your heart, I want you to go to them. I want you to lay your hands on them, and I want you to pray for them. Now, if you want to ask them what they need prayer for, that's fine. But church, we're going to be the church this morning. And so I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat and go and pray for your brother or for your sister in the Lord. Be an encouragement. Be a help to them. But lift them up before the Lord today. So as they sing this next song, have your liberty. Go across this sanctuary and seek God's face on, the, on someone else's behalf. Amen? Amen.
Lord, we just want to praise you right now. God, we thank you that you have met people here, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for the love of the church. A church, God, that, that loves people. A church that wants to honor you, Lord. And Father God, we are so grateful today for every prayer that's been lifted up. And God, we believe, Lord, that every prayer that we pray reaches the throne of Almighty God. So Lord, I just pray right now, God, that as we have been obedient and you have heard our voice, God, we just pray you begin to move in hearts and in lives. And we thank you and we praise you for this. God, we want to continue to worship you. We want to continue to honor you, Lord God. We thank you for the privilege it is, God, to give of our resources and our, our finances. God, you are amazing, God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you allow us, you allow us, God, to keep money, keep your money to steward. And I thank you, Father God, that you, Lord, have commanded us to give, to sow into your kingdom. God, I, I praise you for obedient hearts. People that know your word and say, I'm going to do what God says. So Father, we thank you for this time, Lord, to worship you through offering. And we just pray, God, that you are honored, Lord, in our hearts and in our lives. And we just give you praise, Lord God, for all that you do in our lives, all you do in this church, all you do in this community. God, it's through your provision and your provision only that you use the people in this church, your people, God, to provide and bless others. And we are so thankful, Jesus, that you do that. Bless this now, I pray in Jesus' name. All right, if the kids want to go ahead and come on up to the front, all kids come to the front. Miss Jamie has a wonderful time playing with you guys. Cooper, you want to come over here, buddy? All right. Oh, still more coming. All right. Miss Barb, would you like to pray a prayer over these kids this morning? I do not have a mic with me. Sure. Okay. Heavenly Father, right now, we just thank you for these children, Lord. Thank we just you, thank Jesus. you for their hearts, Lord. Yes, Lord. That their hearts look to you, Lord, for guidance. And that you just thank continue, you, God, to bless them as they learn more about you and uh, you, love Jesus. you. And we just receive your yes, love. Lord. They receive your love, and it just continues to grow in you. We just thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful time learning about Jesus. Who's ready for the word today? Yes? Good. I think God prepared our hearts to receive this morning, right? Amen. Some look re more ready to receive than others. I don't know. I'm just saying. Okay? All right. Anyway. 
Jesus loves everyone. You know that? Jesus loves everyone. Okay? But Jesus came to this world with a mission. You know that? Jesus came to this world with a mission. Okay, Jesus loves everyone. Here's the thing that God really spoke to me this week because, you know, we, I, I saw this thing on, on Facebook that said, Jesus hung out with sinners, and he did. He loved them. Now, he didn't condone what they, what they did, but he, um, he hung out with them. And I got to thinking, I was like, you know, Jesus didn't just hang out with sinners. Okay, can I just tell you that? Jesus had a mission when he was hanging out with sinners. You know what Jesus' mission was? To seek and save the lost. So Jesus wasn't just sitting there hanging out like, oh man, that was a good game, guys. Woohoo. Right? Okay, it wasn't like that. Man, that was some really good summer sausage you made up, you know. Okay, Jesus, was, Jesus wasn't just hanging out with sinners. Okay, Jesus had a purpose for being around sinners. Right? He was on a mission. And I, I got to thinking, I was like, God, that's, and he, I, I really feel like he put this in my spirit. He said, every time you're around people that don't know me, you're on that same mission. You're on that same mission to seek and to save the lost. I went to heaven, but I sent my Holy Spirit, so now I can have billions of me running all over the place, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? We have to have the same heart as Jesus did. Now, if our lives are about ourselves, it's going to be hard to have the same heart that Jesus did. Okay? I'm just going to, I'm just going to be honest with you. It's going to be hard to live that out if, it's, if life is all about you and whether or not people like you. Okay? If you're concerned about people liking you, you're probably not going to share Jesus very much. Okay? It's okay not to be liked, as long as it's not being liked because you're sharing Jesus. Okay? I, I shared this with my kids last night, but just because somebody gets offended or upset doesn't mean you were wrong. Right? We live in a culture to where if somebody's upset, then that other person's wrong. Right? If they're offended, then you were wrong. No, that's not the truth. Because you know why I know that? Because Jesus offended people. Jesus was never wrong. Okay, Jesus was perfect, and everything he said was perfect. And just because people got offended doesn't mean that what he said wasn't right, wasn't true. But when we say things that are true, and they cut to somebody's heart, okay, it doesn't feel good to have your heart cut <laughs> through conviction, does it? Especially when it's coming from someone else. Ouch, right? God, why would you use that person? That hurts even worse. And he's like, good. Good, I'm glad it hurts. Maybe it'll bring about change. Amen? So we're in the, we're in the book of Romans, chapter 10. We're going to finish up chapter 10 this morning. Our mission. Your mission. Everybody, so everybody turn to the person next to you and say, preach, preacher. Okay, I want you to understand, you are a preacher. Okay, you may not look at yourself as that, but you are a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how you need to see yourself. Okay, so, so say it again. Turn to the person next to you, say it again, because I want them to get it. <laughs> Preach, preacher. Okay, you are a preacher. You are a carrier of the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what you get to do. That is your privilege. As a child of Almighty God. Man, that's a wonderful privilege, isn't it? And I'm going to tell you something. Every time you share Jesus, you're going to love him a little bit more. <laughs> because he's that good. When you start sharing how amazing he is, when you start sharing what he did for, you, for everyone, and man, it's just like, wow. You just begin to stand in awe of him again. Sometimes we forget. So let's turn to Romans chapter 10 and get started. Verse 14 is where we're going to begin. We're going to read verse 14 and 15. 
But how can they call on Him to save them unless they believe in Him? And how can they believe in Him if they have never heard about Him? And how can they hear about Him unless someone... Everybody say, I'm someone. (laughs) Okay. Unless someone tells them. And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. What's your feet look like? (laughs) How pretty are your feet today? Because I'm going to tell you how beautiful are the feet of those who take the good news to people. Right? So you heard that you're someone. You're someone today. That, but you're someone to tell someone about Jesus. Isn't that awesome? You, have you guys heard that song yet? I mean, it's been out for a little bit. But I'm just a nobody. Time to tell everybody. All about somebody to save my soul. Okay, we, we like to, yeah, we like to make a big thing out of that in our house. <laughs> we like to put blankets over our head when we're doing it too. It's kind of fun, you know. But, <laughs> but that's exactly what Jesus is saying. We're just, we're just, okay, we are someone that is supposed to go tell everyone about someone that saves our souls. Isn't that awesome? Anybody ever, be, is anybody ever like, eh, you know, it's not that big a deal? I hope you don't feel that way. Here's the problem that I see in the church culture, in the world today, is we, we come up against this as someone else will tell them. Someone else will do it. Right? We have that someone else mentality. Oh, well, I don't need to help. I don't need to serve. Somebody else will do it. But you know the problem with that? Is if everyone is always thinking that someone else will do it, no one's going to do it. Right? Isn't that a problem? When we always think someone else will, then no one will. <clears throat> or we think, oh, well, they, you know, there's so many things out there where they can hear. They can listen to Caleb. You know, they can, they can watch TBN. Okay, that I wouldn't, I would not uh, um, propose that. Okay, or they, you know, or they, they can just go to church. You know, I'll just invite them to church. Okay, can I? I just told somebody yesterday. I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to get you to come to church. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to tell you about Jesus. Jesus is going to take people to church, people, right? Okay, we don't, we don't need to try to win people to church. We need to try to win them to Jesus. And so that's our goal. That's our purpose. Now, I I would love for them to come to church, but I want them to know Jesus. Because there's people that sit in church Sunday after Sunday that don't know Jesus. They can sit here and hear the truth, and they never respond. So, or maybe, maybe we're like, well, you know those bell ringers at Salvation Army, they'll say something to them. Church, the problem is, is we are the ones. You're the someone. That God is calling out this morning. And he's saying, you're the someone I want to tell everyone about Jesus. You're the someone. I don't know how beautiful your feet are, but I hope they're really pretty. I almost made people take off their shoes this morning. Psalm 107 verse 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? That's a question. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others. He has redeemed you from your enemies. Right? If He's redeemed you, speak out. Tell the world. Wake the neighbors. Get the word out. Tell them, hey, Jesus saved me. I was in a pit of sin, and Jesus pulled me out and set me on a solid rock. Hallelujah. 
Verse Peter 3.13 says, Now who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always, you know what that word always means, right? Always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. Always be ready to explain the hope inside of you. Does anybody struggle with that? You get put on the spot by somebody. It's like, man, what's, what, who's Jesus? What's, you know, you say you serve Jesus. Tell me about him. Uh, get my pastor on speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, that's that's we need to know that, right? We need to we need to make sure that we are ready at any moment when somebody says, "Hey, what's the hope inside of you?" Hey, let me tell you about it. Let me tell you about this Jesus that I know. Let me tell you about the hope that I have. And we need to be prepared at all times. Because church, you've all heard this before, but I'm going to tell you again, we are the only Bible that some people are going to read. We're the only Bible. And if we aren't sharing the truth with our lives, then some people are never going to see it. Some people are never going to hear it. The only Bible. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse two says this. The only letter of recommendation we need is you yourselves. Your lives are a letter Written in our hearts, everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Clearly, you are a letter from Christ showing the result of our ministry among you. You know, I think about this and I feel like, I feel like Paul, you know, it's like you're a result of the ministry that, that Crystal and I have, have done in these seven years. You're the result of that ministry and now you're a letter being written to the hearts of many other people, right? That ministry is going out all over the world. This letter is not written with pen and ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of stone, but on human hearts. That's what we are, right? We're living letters being written right before people of who Jesus Christ is. Isn't that awesome? That is amazing. It's almost like you just wrote a letter that is yourself, you sealed it, you delivered it to that person, and now that person gets to see who Christ is because of your life, because of the way you live in front of them. See, we have the privilege of living out the word, expressing hope in Jesus Christ, living with kindness in our hearts, and sharing the greatest event that ever happened in the history of the world. We have that privilege now, I want, I want to put this disclaimer out here because you all know how I feel about witnessing. Okay, it's not a secret. We have pre- I have preached on this on many occasions, right? <clears throat> but I want you to understand this. I am not giving you my opinion today. I am not on a soapbox this morning. I am preaching the powerful, living Word of God And we are to live it out in our lives. Do we understand that? This is not just me saying what I want. This is what God is saying that He wants. So the question is this. How will people hear the gospel if we're silent Christians? How will they hear it? We can determine how people will receive it or respond. We, we cannot determine how people will receive it or respond to it. But our job is to preach it. Right? I got to preach it. I got to tell people. You know, I had this message prepared before um, a situation happened this week. But man, it was like I read over my notes last night and I was like, man, God, you're speaking to me. (laughs) This is like I needed to hear this. I sat across the table from a couple yesterday and I poured out my heart and I shared the gospel. 
very transparently with them. And when I got done, they rejected Jesus. But you know what? I drove away from that place knowing I had done what I did, what I, what I was supposed to do. I put seed, because it's not my job to bring increase. Not my job. Okay, I know we want to we want to harvest, we want people to come to come to Jesus as soon as we share it. But that's not how it always works. Now, was it heartbreaking? Yeah, definitely. But I'm here to tell you right now that I did what I was supposed to do. And the seed has been planted, the seed has been watered. And now we just see what God's got in store. Right? So church, here's what I want you to get, because there's going to be times you're going to say something to a family member or to a friend, and man, they're going to they're reject you. They're not going to want to hear what you have to say, but that should never stop you from saying it. If the Spirit of God is prompting you and telling you, and you know what? If the Word of God has already prompted you and told you, share the good news, then do it. Do it. Because God is saying, how can they be changed if they don't hear? How can this happen? How, if they don't hear the good news, if the seed is never planted, how can it grow? We're seed planters. We're seed waterers. Right? Listen, Romans chapter 10, verse 16 and set through 18. But not everyone, listen, not everyone welcomes the good news. Did you hear that? Not everyone welcomes the good news. Everybody wants everybody to welcome the good news. Oh, man, oh, oh, thank you for that great news. It was so amazing. Oh, man, thank you for sharing this with me. No, some people are like, man, get out of my face. I don't want your good news. But listen, there's, there's good news getting ready to come. For Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. Did you hear that? If we want people to have faith, they've got to hear the good news about Jesus. And if we're not sharing the good news about Jesus, why are we expecting faith to, be, to happen? Why are we expecting that? But we have to be the ones to share the good news. But I ask have the people of Israel actually heard the message? Yes, they have. The message has gone throughout the earth and the words to all the world. So before people can believe in something, they have to hear about it. Okay? They have to hear about it. If they haven't heard about it, they can't believe in something. Faith in Christ comes from hearing the good news about Christ. Again, it's not up to us to determine what happens from there. It's just up to us to do what God has told us to do. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Powerful, powerful verses here, right here. Listen, verse 14. But thank God, he has made us his captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphal procession. Now he uses us. Did you hear that? He uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere. Like a sweet perfume. Mm, don't you like sweet perfume? Isn't that nice? When somebody walks by you and they smell good, you know, that's just like, man, that's, that's nice. I'm using this new hair stuff, and man, it's like, it smells really good, you know. And it's like, man, that's nice. I'll walk outside, I'll, the wind will start blowing, and I'll be like, hmm, I can smell it. It's nice. <laughs> it's nice. But listen, our lives are a Christ-like fragrance, rising up to God. But this fragrance, listen to this, okay, this is, I want you to get this. This fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and, and by those who are perishing. To those who are perishing, it is a dreadful smell of death and doom. Yeah. But to those who are being saved, it is like a life-giving perfume who is adequate for such a task as this. So I want to put it like this. Those who are perishing, your perfume smells like B.O. Okay? And I'm going to tell you, B.O. is offensive. I'm just going to let you know that. All right? Uh, nobody likes to smell B.O. But 
For those who are being saved, those who are hearing the good news and saying, yes, this is what I've been waiting to hear my whole life. They're like, oh, I'm taking it in because that's a good smell, right? Yeah. And so that's why we share it. Okay, even though it might be an offensive smell to some, I'm going to tell you one day, one day, it's going to turn into a good smell in their nose. You know, I thought about this and I thought, man, I preach the word of God week in and week out. But I don't determine whether or not anyone takes it and applies it to their lives and lives it out. I'm called to preach the word. It doesn't matter. You know what? Whether I see people doing what God has told me to preach, it it's, it's really makes no difference. I'm called to preach the word, right? It's, uh, my, my preaching is not dependent upon your actions. But I have been ordained by God to preach the word of God. And I'm going to do it. Whether anybody obeys it. I think about my man Jeremiah. That guy, is, it says nobody turned from their wickedness in the days of Jeremiah. It, it didn't happen. He was the weeping prophet. He continued to tell them and re- told them to repent. Get right before God. And Nah, nope. Because it didn't stop him. No, because you know what it said in Jeremiah chapter 17. It says, his words burning in my heart. I can't keep quiet. I've got to preach it. I've got to tell people. Because that's what God called me to do. Now, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't have thoughts of, is this really making a difference? Is me preaching week after week after week making a difference, God? There's times, there's weeks, there's Mondays. Not every Monday, but there are Mondays. It's like, God, is this making a difference? But then, you know what I do when when those thoughts come? I bring them into obedience with Jesus Christ. And I say, huh, uh, devil, I'm going to keep preaching. You ain't, you ain't going to shut me down, man. I, I've, I've, got a, I've got a job to do, right? i got a calling on my life, and I'm going to preach the word. I'm going to be in, in season and out of season. Praise God. I, but you know why? You know why? Because of this verse right here. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 and 11 says, the, the rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. Okay, that's exactly what our words are. The rain, we're, we're throwing it out there, right? Seed needs rain, it needs snow. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. Everybody say it's the same with my word. I send it out, and it always, you, man, I love that word always in the word, I'm telling you. It always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Everybody said amen. Come on. Every word you have ever proclaimed about Jesus has gone forth, and it will not return to you void. Praise God. There's weight. I'm telling you, there's some weight in the words of God. There's weight in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Okay, you're not just throwing out nothing. You're throwing out something that changes lives. It's living. It's powerful. I'm t- Living things, it gets a hold of you, right? It'll change your life. So here's the powerful truth, church. The Word of God is always going to accomplish something when it's shared. It's always going to accomplish something. They may be getting mad at first. But man, I'm telling you, the Word of God, because it's living in power, it's going to keep working on them, keep digging at them. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I love, I love watching somebody squirm because of the Word of God, because the Holy Spirit's working on them. And they just, they're just like wiggling in their seats like, oh, man, I wish you'd just get off of this. Right? I love it because I know the Spirit of God's working on them. Right? Like I said before, church, even if it's not well received, we got to preach it. We got to preach it. I got to tell you this because th- I looked this up this week and I was like blown away. 
Okay, Stephen. We talked about Stephen recently. Stephen was preaching the word, right? He preached it. He preached it until his death, until people threw rocks at him until he died, right? He preached the word. He pre- On that day, it did not look like Peter's preaching or Stephen's um, preaching did any good. Okay, it just says that he died. It doesn't say anybody gave their hearts to the Lord. It doesn't say anything like that. But here's the thing. We all know that there was a man that by the name of Saul standing by with Stephen's clothes at his feet, and he was just watching, nodding his head in approval. Fast forward, okay? You know, we, we look at the book of Acts, and we think that this all happened in a few months. Okay? Fast forward one year later. One year from the time Stephen preached that message to the time Saul got the letters to go to Damascus. One year later. Saul's walking on the road to Damascus after having seed planted in his heart by Stephen. And boom, here comes the increase. He gets knocked on his tail. And he gets saved that day. See, church, one year later, one year. It didn't happen right then. But one year later, it happened. And I, I know, I know, we, we don't like that. Okay, I'm going to tell you, you don't like that, I don't like that. But how many of y'all go, uh, went out in your garden, planted a seed, and went out the next day and expected it to be there? It doesn't happen. Right? Okay, yeah, we wanted it yesterday. God, I planted that seed yesterday. I thought it would be there the day before. <laughs> Come on. But the thing is, is when you plant seed, guess what? You got to wait now. You got to wait for that seed to grow. You got to wait for that seed to flourish, to, to become something, to become fruit. See, here's what I know God is doing something in this church. He's planting, He's watering through different people. Okay, we just heard lots of different words this morning. He's using each and each different people, and he is, he is preparing you. He is preparing you because I'm going to tell you something. You can do this in more than a church setting. You can walk into Walmart, and you can, you can just get quiet before the Lord. You can focus on the heart of Jesus, and you say, Lord, use me to speak into somebody's life. And he will do it. If you'll be obedient, if you'll speak out, he can do that. But we have to continue, okay, listen, we have to continue to preach the whole truth and nothing but the truth in love to everybody, right? The whole truth and nothing but the truth, okay? We don't compromise. We don't, we don't lower the standard of Christ to try to win some. That's not how it works. We preach the truth. We put the seed out there, and then we let God do His work. Okay, we're going we're gonna to read through the end of the chapter, and then we're going we're gonna to finish this up. Verse 19. But I ask, did the people of Israel really understand? Yes, they did. For even in the times of Moses, God said, I will rouse your jealousy through people who are not even a nation. I will provoke your anger through the foolish Gentiles. And later, Isaiah spoke boldly for God, saying, I was found by people who were not looking for me. I showed myself to those who were not asking for me. But regarding Israel, God said, All day long I opened my arms to them, but they were disobedient and rebellious. All day long he opened his arms to them. And they were continually disobedient and rebellious. Did that stop God from opening his arms to them? Did it it make God be like, I'm done? Nope. It kept his arms open. His love continued to flow. See, church, here's, here's what God wants you to know. And I told you this before, but your soul, my soul, the Israelite's soul, are valuable to God. Okay, those people that you, you uh, meet at work or those people that rub you the wrong way, their souls are valuable to God. 
And we, we need to make sure that we are placing the value on people's souls that we need to. Their souls are valuable. Jesus, God will do anything it takes to get our attention, won't he? He said, I, I went ahead and opened it to Gentiles so they would be provoked to jealousy. So maybe they would believe. <laughs> wow. He's going to provoke us to jealousy now just so we would believe? Yeah, he'll, he'll do anything. Because God knows the human mind, doesn't he? God knows the human mind. He knows that when somebody has something that they want and that somebody else has it, they're going to get, they're going to be like, I want that too. Right? I want that too. We call it keeping up with the Joneses. I want that too. But God is saying, hey, I've given you something that is really good. You're going to walk around when other people would feel, be sorrowful, you're going to walk around with joy. When other people would be full of anxiety, you're going to walk around with peace. And you know what? When they come up to you and they say, what in the world? Why? 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 I don't understand. I, I, it makes me mad that you have peace right now. It makes me mad that you got joy right now. And all you got to do is say, you can too. You can too. Because it's not me. It's him. Right? God's pretty smart. You agree? But God says, do you want what they have? Come on. I offer it to you first. It's not too late. I offered it to you first. The Jews knew they needed a Savior, but they chose rebellion and disobedience instead. Church, the bottom line is this. Sin and death have plagued this world. But we have been given an antidote to sin and death. Do we understand that? We have the antidote in our hands. People are dying in their sin. People are dying in their sin. And you're sitting there with the antidote, and some of us are sitting there just watching. It's like, man, I wish there was something I could do for them. And we can. We can give them the antidote of Jesus Christ. And they can be delivered from sin and delivered from death. But if we're, but if we're going to be stingy, right? Now, I got this antidote for myself, for my family, you know, everybody else, I mean, like I said before, go to hell, right? Because that's basically what we're saying if we're not willing to hand out the antidote to the people that are dying in their sins. And I know that's not your heart. I know that's not what we want to be. I know that's not what we want to do. But when we refuse what the Spirit is prompting us to do, and I know the Spirit's prompting us to do things, but it's hard, right? Right? We don't want to do the hard things. we got to step out and do the hard things. Every time God asks me to do something, it's like, oh, Lord. Right? Because it's hard. I've got, to, I've got to sit there. I've got to prepare myself. But at the same time, I've also got to act. I've got to do. Now, the easy things are easy. But that's not what God's asking me to do. Hard things lead to a great reward. So, who wants to share the antidote today? Who has a heart to share the antidote of Jesus Christ? We got two over here. Praise God. Church, it's not, it's not just my job. Okay, I know I'm your pastor, but it's not just my job to preach. You're a preacher. You are a carrier of the gospel. You have been given the greatest antidote known to man. Jesus, I'm going to end with the words of Jesus because this is, this is what we need to hear. Because like I said before, this isn't me on my soapbox. This isn't me and my opinion. This is Jesus Christ telling us what we need to do. Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he says, And he told them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. 
but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And they will drink anything poisonous. It won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. Now I'm going to tell you something. When Jesus said, go preach, it starts in your home. Okay, if Jesus isn't being preached in your home, it needs to start be, he needs to start being preached in your home. But then it goes out into the community. It goes to our neighbors. And then it goes into our region. And then it goes into our city. And then it goes into our state. And then it goes into our nation. And then it goes into our world. But we have to start with the people that are right in front of us. We can't hold it in. We are the people. We are the hope of the world. Right? We carry the hope of Jesus Christ in our lives. So the challenge this week. The challenge this week is to show the love of Jesus Christ to the people around you. If you choose not to, it's not me. It's, well, I don't really care what pastor had to say. Okay, again, it's not me. I hope you, hopefully you care what Jesus has to say. I don't know if you, I, I, I was, I was uh, thinking about this and I thought, man, I bet you it's probably... Every eight to ten weeks that God tells me to preach or leads me to preach on sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Really. And we're just going through the book of Romans. <laughs> right? This isn't something I thought of on my own. Not that I think of any of my messages on my own. I get them from the Holy Spirit. But this isn't something that this is just going through the book of the Bible that God is telling us again. He already told us back in Romans chapter 1. And now here we are in Romans chapter 10. He's saying, hey, are you sharing Jesus yet? Are you sharing the good news yet? Because I'm still telling you to. I'm still commanding you to. Are you doing it? So if you are here today and you're saying, you know what, Pastor? I want to share the gospel. I believe that Jesus has given me a gift. And that gift is salvation. And I believe he wants me to share the hope of the world, Jesus Christ, with other people. And I want to start doing that. I want to be bold and I want to do this. If you're saying, yes, that's me, I want you to stand up right where you are. Stand up right where you are. If you believe that you're a preacher and God is calling you out and saying, preach, preacher, today's the day. Come on. You want to be that person. You want to be a person that preaches the word of God. Praise God. Yes. Preaches the word of God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Chloe to come up where she's at. There you go. She's going to come up. If you're standing, okay, I want you to stand. As soon as, as, soon as we do what we're going to do, you, you're able to sit down or you're able to worship, whichever. But I want you, this is what I want to do. I'm going to ask my wife to help me. I'm going to ask my mom and dad to help me. This is my mom and dad, if you don't know them, Bill and Kathy. They're going to help me this morning. But what's going to happen is we're going to come around, we're going to anoint you. And we're, we're, it's like, this is an anointing service. We're, we're anointing you and we're saying, we're sending you out. You are a witness for Jesus Christ. Okay? We're going to declare that over your life. You are a witness for Jesus Christ. And then you can go and sit down or you can worship. You can, you can ask God to help you in this because we know it's not easy. Okay, I know it's not easy. I'm a pastor and it's not easy to be a witness for Jesus. I have to die to myself all the time. So I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and come on up. Here's some anointing oil right here. And as they sing this song, we're just going to come around. I, I, just, I just ask you just to close your eyes. Just focus on Jesus right now.
Just focus on being sent out. Focus on being a witness for Him. And as they come around, they're just going to proclaim this over your life. They're going to anoint you, and we're just going to send you out today. This is a commissioning time to where we're sending you out as workers in the vineyard, in the world, to declare Jesus Christ to others. Amen? All right. good
Yes, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You have been anointed, you have been commissioned, now go, preach the word to everybody you meet. God bless you, I love you, have a wonderful day.